Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you don't know me, I am Nikki and I'm known as Nikki Craft around the social media and crafting world. So today I've decided that I'm going to do a collection of videos sort of like around the flower shaping, using flower shaping moulds, using different colouring techniques. So on the first one, what I'm going to do is we're going to be going through a few different ways that you can actually colour your flowers. So if a lot of you have watched some of my shows on Create and Craft, you will know that I predominantly have been using the daubers, which are these here. So these are heartfelt creation daubers, but you can use any foam sort of um, daubers that you can get in your local shops or your online shops. And then I also use my predominantly again my distress oxides now the reason I like my distress oxides is because they blend beautifully and they are also really nice and quick okay for your coloring so if you do make a lot of flowers I find that this technique is probably the best way for you to get your color onto your flowers so the flowers that I'm using today are the clematis from the climbing clematis collection from heartfelt creations but obviously you can use any flowers that you have in your crafty stash. These are ones that come with a stamp and a coordinating die. I like these ones because you have got that detail on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the colouring of them using your Distress Oxides. Okay, so again, I am going to be using my daubers. So this is going to be a really nice, easy, quick technique that you might want to use if you are creating a lot of flowers so what I like to do is I always kind of start with the kind of the pale color so I like to put a base coat on first okay so with this one I'm going to be using the shaded lilac in the oxide range and I'm just going to grab a clean dauber so this is a brand new dauber here and I'm just going to put that colour down. So before I put that colour down, to make sure that I'm not going to put too much on, I'm actually going to wipe some of that off on some cardstock that I've got here. And then I can go in and gently get that colour down. It's much better to put less down than it is to put more down. Okay, so gently taking that off again and just getting that colour down onto your flower. So because you have got the stamped image on there, you can still see that stamped markings on there, which is really nice because then you don't have to worry too much about your detail on there. So I'm going across all of those petals and just getting that colour down. And just gently rubbing your daub across, okay? So that's got my base colour down. Then I want to go in with a slightly darker colour. So I'm going to add a little bit of shading. And the colour that I've got here is the Wilted Violet from, again, the Oxide range. This is a really nice deep colour. So because this is a really deep colour, I really do only need a tiny bit on there. Okay, so again, taking my ink onto my dauber and then rubbing off. OK, and then I'm going to literally with a kind of sweeping up technique, just sweep along the tip. OK, so again, going all the way around. I'm not taking any more ink on my dauber as of yet. Just getting that colour on there. So I really do like this technique. And I think you would like this technique too, because as I say, it is a really nice, easy, quick technique. I'm going in again with my ink and just getting some more colour on my dauber and just taking some off. And again, going in with a sweeping motion. So when I'm sweeping, I'm actually bringing my dauber up. OK, so sort of sweeping in a upward motion. If you want a little bit more, you can keep going in. So if you wanted just a really nice gentle colour there, you can stop there or you can go in a little bit more. You can go further in onto the petal if you want, which means that you would just bring it across a little bit more and then sweep up. OK, 
So there you have a really nice, beautiful finish on there. And as I say, it is a really nice, quick way of colouring. Then I've gone in with my ink again. Now this time, I'm actually focusing more on the actual corner of my dauber here, which is really, really good if you have these kind of daubers. If you don't and you're just using a circle one, you just have to be very careful and focus on the corner. But I will show you another technique in a second um, so that if you don't have the um, daubers here from Heartfelt Creations, you could use a different technique. So with this one, I'm just going up the center of each petal, just very gently, again, just sweeping that across, going in again and adding a bit, bit more color if you want to. Just sweeping that up to where the image has been stamped onto the flower. Okay, so there you have a little bit more detail on there. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back in with that lilac colour and just blend all that colour in just a little bit more with that dauber with the lilac on. Adding no more lilac to my dauber, but just blending that in. Okay, so there you have your colour down on your image. As I think you could see, that is a really nice, easy, quick way. Now, when I'm making my flowers, I always, always colour the back. So it's up to you whether or not you want to do the two tone again, or you just want to go in with one of those tones. Now, I always like to go in darker on the underneath. So I'm going to do mine in the wilted violet colour. Doesn't really matter if you only just do the tips because you don't actually fully see the back of your flower, but you may see the tip depending on how you actually shape your flower. Okay, so just blending that in. And that gives you a really nice effect. Okay, so if you noticed, I did actually stamp my flower in a coloured stamp. Um, sorry, a coloured ink. So the ink that I used, I do believe was an archival ink. No, actually it wasn't. I think it might have been a memento ink um, in Fuchsia, I think. Or it could have been the archival. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but you could use either, as long as it's a coloured ink. Okay? Because I'm not actually using water on it. I'm just using the oxides. But if you don't have these daubers, okay... One of my new found friends in my crafty stash is the Distress Pencils, okay? So these come in a variety of colours. They come in three tins and they are water-based, okay? And they are also woodless. And I will be doing some more videos um, regarding the Distress Oxide, I'm um, sorry, the Distress Pencils in the future. So do keep an eye out. Um, because there's lots of different techniques that you can use on this. So if I say, if you don't have those particular daubers that I've just used, you can go in and you can get more of a precise colouring using your pencils. So this is going to be a technique that I'm using both my distress pencils and my oxides. Okay, so I've got that colour in there and then I'm going to go in with... I think I'm going to go in with the shaded lilac again using that same dauber and then I'm just going to take some of that color off and blend that in okay as you can see it slightly blends that pencil that I put down there down the center of that flower And just blend that in. I'm not adding any water to that pencil mark, but you could, if you wanted, you could actually blend that with some water. So if I just find a watercolor pen, I've actually got a watercolor um, brush here. So if I just 
get some water coming out of it. I'm just going to take some of that off with some tissue. And then if you wanted to, you could just use your distress pencil. And as you can see, that still gives you a really nice effect. Okay. So you could use your distress pencil on its own. You could use your distress pencil with your oxide. If you want to go in and add some more colour with just your pencil, what you could do is just wipe some of that water off because you don't want too much water on that pencil. Okay, on the, sorry, the end of your paintbrush. I'm just going to go in and I'm going to take some of that colour from that pencil. Make sure I haven't got too much. Now, there is a little bit too much water on there. The only problem what I found is using the water brushes is sometimes you can get a little bit too much water. So if you're kind of not sort of like familiar with your water coming out of your brush, you could use a paintbrush. And I find this is a little bit more precise, okay, because I've got a little bit more control of how much water I've actually got on my paintbrush and I'm going to go in exactly the same way take some of that ink colour off there go in to make sure I actually haven't got quite enough water on there so just added a bit more water there go in with a little bit more colour off my pencil and just push that on and then I can go in if I just get enough water on there hold on a minute I'm being a little bit too cautious on how much water I've got on there so I can go in now if you look there and add a little bit more detail so that's just using your watercolor um sorry your distress pencils and because they are water-based you can blend them and get that color onto your petal and this goes for anything that you're coloring really and I can take a little bit off as well so if I want to blend it a little bit more I've taken that colour off of my brush and I'm just going to go in and just take some of that colour off and just add a little bit more detail. But I think if you've seen what I'm seeing, yes, that's a great technique. It gives you a nice effect, but it's time consuming and we don't always have time to spend that much time on your colouring of your flowers. But as I say, it's completely up to you which technique you use because I can now go in if I want to with that wilted violet and add a little bit more colour again going in from the centre. So I've got kind of like a two colour shading going on here. And I'm just going in from the centre, pulling that colour up, going in on the top again, adding some more of that wilted violet I'm not putting any more ink on my brush um my dauber either I think there's kind of enough if you are new to daubers or this technique um I would probably say just have a practice just have a practice sort of sweeping it how much pressure you're going to put on the sweeping up technique on some spare paper before you actually go in and start creating your flowers so this one was the one using the distress pencils and the um, oxides as well. And obviously we did do the little technique there with just using your paintbrush as well, blending that oxide pencil in. And this one was just with your oxides. Okay, both very nice techniques but slightly different. You've got a more deeper colour here on your on your um, petals as well. And just bear in mind that you want to make sure you do catch the edges so you don't get the white edge around your petals as well because there's nothing worse than having white edges on your flowers. Okay, so again, you are going to want to colour the back. So I will quickly go in with that wilted violet and just add some colour to the back of those petals. Okay, so that's just two techniques that you can use to color your flowers. But we're going to do more. So I'm kind of thinking, do I do a series of shorter videos or do I do sort of like one long video going into coloring techniques for your flowers? 
So I'm not 100% sure. I'm not sure how long we've been going on this video. I don't want them to kind of just drag on too long. So I think I'm going to keep this one pretty short. And then in the next video, if you want to watch the next video, we'll go into a little bit more detail on more colouring. So on the next, next video, kind of thinking we might use our intense pencils, okay? So the intense pencils are something that I've only really just brought. I'm having a practice with them and seeing how you can use them to do your colouring for your stamps and also for your flowers. Loving what I'm, the detail that I'm getting on my flowers. So if you want to watch that video, I will be doing that video later today. So I will be adding that to my YouTube channel. So what I'll do is once I've uploaded this video, I will put a link in the comments or in the um, in the bio of this video so that you can link on to that next video. OK, so that is your flower colouring on there. So just to go in, actually, because we haven't done the, um, the leaves on that, have we? So if you want to do some colouring of the leaves of the Clematis collection, very, very similar technique. OK, so what I'm going to do is just put those purples away and I'm going to go in with mowed lawn and bundled sage to do the colouring of this one. So I'm going to go in with my darker colour on this. No, I'm not actually. I'm going to go in with my bundled sage, which is my paler colour. That is going to get my base colour down. OK, so let's just move this card over there slightly so that you can see. And let me make sure that you can see that leaf there. And then I'm just going in, similar technique, not too much colour on there. Just blend that colour in. Just holding that leaf. Now, I do mine a slightly different because you may see some videos where they actually stamp and then they colour and then they die cut them out. I like to do it the other way around. I like to die cut mine out because you then get the can get the colour on the edges of your flowers or your leaves that you are creating. Okay, so that's the reason why I like to die cut mine out first. So I'm then going to go in with mode Lawn on this one, taking some of that colour and taking some of that colour off so I've not got too much. And then I'm just going to blend that in there, just on the tip. And then from the bottom, I'm just going to go up in a very similar way that we did the petals sweeping up just to get that colour in there and get that nice sort of colour depth in there. So if I just lift that up and just show you, you can see the detail of that leaf. Really nice, easy, quick. OK, so then we're going to colour the back. I'm going to go in with the mode Lawn colour just to add that colour on the back doesn't really matter if it looks a bit messy because you're not going to really see it. It is purely that when you put them on a card or a project, you don't get that white back. And there you have that technique there. So on another one, let me see if I've got another leaf here. I have got another leaf. Let's just grab that. So let's try this one using the Distress Pencils and the Oxides. OK. So let's go in with the Rustic Wilderness this time. OK, I did actually break my pencil there, which is why there's some tape on there. So we're going to go in with that darker colour in there. Just go with where the lines are this time on your stamped image and just bring that up and sweep it up just a little bit more in between and that will get your colour. Now, again, you can use your pencil, um, I'm sorry, your paintbrush to actually go in there and blend that in if you want to, if you don't have the Distress Inks. Or if you do have the Distress Inks, exactly the same way, going in with that bundled sage. And I'm just going to blend in with that bundled shade sage. I didn't actually even put any other colour on there. And there you have sort of like a mixture of your 
pencil and your bundled sage distress oxide going in a little bit more of that bundled sage because i don't think it's quite dark enough so i will add a little bit more water so let me just grab a little bit more water and wet my paintbrush there so i've just added some color let's just see what happens when we just blend that in you can get a really nice detail on there and again really nice and easy and quick so that one's using both your distress pencils and your oxides and again the back do exactly the same just go in and add some color on the back of your image so that you can get a really nice finish on the back there so it doesn't matter if it's too messy because we can't actually see that once we have shaped it so talking about shaping i will be adding some videos as well so when you come to actually see this video there will be some links to some other videos that you can watch on the shaping of them using the flower shaping molds using the um, deluxe flower shaping tool i will also be doing some using the dress my craft um what's it called i think it's called the golf well i call it a golf tool not really 100 percent sure that's this one here if you're not actually sure what that is um, so we'll be doing some techniques in some shaping of your flowers and your leaves using two or three different techniques that I've got. So there will be some links um, in the details of this video. So that is two different colouring techniques that we've just used for these flowers and leaves. So I will be back very shortly using i think we're going to use in the next video the intense pencils and they are the if you're not familiar with them they are the derwent intense pencils that i've got here okay so these are a really really i would say special pencil for anybody that doesn't know because they're not particularly water-based pencils they are actually um what do we call it? There is a name for it. Hang on a minute. I've got my notes here. Um, light to call it. Um, and I should have really remembered, but I've got a bit of brain fog today. So yeah, so these are actually what they call water soluble. Okay, so I'm not going to come on here and say to you guys, I know everything about watercolour pencils. I know everything about the Derwent Intents. I'm new to these pencils. So basically, when you see me using them, you will be learning along with me. Okay, so that will be in the link if you want to take a look at that video as well. And you will be probably, I really love the technique on that as well. So um, I will be back shortly with a next video and I hope to see you soon. So do like and just um, subscribe to the video so that you don't miss out on any of my new videos because there's going to be a lot coming up. Um, I have a lot of exciting things to be showing you over the next few months. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye.